Pets thrive on predictability, so it's more important than ever to understand how transitions can negatively impact our furry friends, especially given the more than 11 million new pets that joined families during the pandemic who are really used to everyone being home 24-7. Dog training expert Darius Cooper joins us this morning to discuss ways we can help our pets cope with the changes and manage that anxiety. Hi, Darius. Hey, Aubrey, glad to be with you. Your show is so much fun. I'd love to be here. Oh, well, we are so happy to have you, and we always love to talk about our pets. So explain to our viewers this anxiety issue um, that pets are experiencing, especially right now. Right. So, you know, Aubrey, the last year and a half has been insane. And, and the reality is our pets have been along for the ride. And, you know, when we think about pet mental health, it's something that's not often talked about. And so when we think about our daily routines as they change, as some of us are going back to the office, it could dramatically impact our pet's behavior. Uh, so, of course, you know, pet mental health is so important right now. And when we think about social anxiety, separation anxiety with people, uh, with pets, it's real as well. Uh, so when we think about separation anxiety, it really is a dog that is hyper attached to their pet parent and they really don't have the ability or the know how to self settle and calm themselves when they're stressed. Mm -hmm. And same goes for social anxiety going out into the new world when they haven't really been there yet. Totally understandable. I don't have any dogs of my own at home, but my sister has dogs and a lot of friends and other family members have dogs and I'm seeing this. I'm seeing these behaviors. Talk about the potential causes and other indicators of separation or social anxiety. Right. So, you know, first off, you know, pets and all animals, they're extremely adaptable, but they really do thrive with structure and routine. And of course, you know, when you think about separation anxiety, it can be genetic, but in many cases, uh, it's triggered from a major life event. So if you think a death in the family, a move, or in some cases, like I said, going back to the office, that can be a shock to a system for any small animal or large animal that for that matter. And of course, it's going to be really important that again, we are very careful and systematic when we think about our training solutions mm -hmm. uh, to of course, make sure that they're comfortable within their own skin when we're home and you know, when we're not home. So when pet parents maybe see some of these signs of anxiety creeping in and affecting their pets, what is what the first thing that they can do? Right. So, you know, of course, I am a trainer and behavioral expert, but I am always going to advocate for veterinary care. So the very first call that every pet parent should make, it should be their veterinarian uh, for the reasons that we want to make sure that there aren't any underlying health issues that might be impacting the behaviors that you're actually seeing with your pets. And then from there, you can put together a game plan in partnership with the trainer to really identify exactly what's going to be the right move for your individual pet. You know, one thing I, I will say, you know, separation anxiety and just anxiety as a whole, it's a very complex issue. Um, which means it's probably going to be a very complex training plan and or solution. And I'm telling you, when trainers and veterinarians and pet parents collide, that's really when the solutions take place. Oh, yeah. So can you offer any of your go to techniques, tips or maybe products that pet parents can use to help kind of mitigate some of this pet anxiety? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I'm really big on proactivity. So if time is on your side and you know that you're transitioning back to work in a month or so, you know, utilize this time right now to start beginning that exposure and separation anxiety training. So for example, I'm really big on what I like to call mock departures. So, you know, when I sit on the couch with my dog at my side, I might go up and walk over to the door and touch the doorknob or pick up my car keys and then turn around and head back to the couch. Now, what this actually does, it helps to slowly desensitize the dog to that that big moment when I actually do have to leave the house and kind of the same thing goes for, you know, a social, a social anxiety um, when we're solely exposing our dogs to the greater outdoors and simply going into the car in the driveway, sitting there with the dog at your side, creating positive experiences and not even going anywhere. Those are really helpful tips to really kind of transition dogs back to our new normal. And how important is that routine and structure? Because I know with kids, you know, sometimes you give in mm. and then pets, when they give you those puppy dog eyes, it can be like, oh, okay. But you know, <laughs> is that really setting yourself up? <laughs> Yeah, it's funny. You said puppy dog eyes. I look to my right and my dog just looking at me like, Dad, are you done yet? Um, <laughs> so, you know, at the end of the day, you know, routines are so very important. And, you know, again, that's where a trainer can really help to build on these routines with you at your side. They can help you to identify the behaviors that you're seeing. And the great thing about Petco, we have some awesome classes uh, specifically that provide you with at home take home activities that are really easy to implement and plug into your daily life. All right, Darius, this is all good advice. 
And we appreciate you this morning. For more pet tips, you can visit petco.com slash mental health.